Hi there. Welcome to Inside the Wooniverse, a podcast brought to you from the corner of Fringe and Maine. I'm your host, Colette Baron reed Joining us today is my dearest friend, Gabby Bernstein. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You know, for the last 16 years, she has been transforming lives including her own, and we're going to unpack that today. Gabby's a number one New York Times bestselling author who has penned nine books. That's a lot, including her most recent, this is very important, Happy Days, The Guided Path from Trauma to Profound Freedom and Inner Peace. She's also the host of the most awesome podcast called Dear Gabby, her weekly podcast where she offers up real-time coaching, straight talk, and conversations about personal growth, and spirituality, a.k.a. the woo. Welcome, Gabby. Welcome to the woo. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. It's so, be- it just, this is such a selfish moment for me because I just so want to connect to you always, and we never have enough time, and oh. so this hour spent with you is such a pleasure. Thank you. Oh my gosh, my my pleasure too. I feel the same way about you, and uh, we'll make a little bit more of a concerted effort when both of us have time. Uh, I don't know when that'll be. <laughs> we'll be we'll be on that stage again together. Hopefully yes. in the fall, we'll be back oh, on stage together. I would love that. Yeah, I'd love that. So we've known each other for a long time, um, mm-hmm. and I would love to take a journey with you, because maybe some of the listeners don't know you, although you are a household name, (laughs) but some people may not know your entire journey. How did you get started with all of this? I believe I started out as a spiritual teacher when I was 14. Mm. I don't think you know this. I was really drawn to whatever kind of spiritual connection I had in that moment. At the time, it was, I went to a Jewish camp, uh, which really celebrated Shabbat every Friday. We had a lot of, a lot of, is you know, Israeli dance and wow. singing along and all that sort of spiritual connection. And so it wasn't such a religious camp because it was Reformed Jews, but we were really connecting to the soul and the spirit of that religion. And that inspired me to become uh, the president of the regional youth group, Wow, <laughs> which made me this leader, this like fourteen year old Sherpa, you know, <laughs> like leading people on the weekends in different parts of Westchester County in these spiritual weekends. And I was the 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 voice box. So I really didn't realize it at the time, but that's what drew me in so closely. That's what brought me so much joy. And so, in retrospect, I can look back and say, wow, I, I knew intuitively that this mm-hmm. was my path to, to be a leader, to be a spiritual teacher, to empower others through spiritual principles and awaken people to that. Then fast forward, probably like, <laughs> you know, a minute later, when I was about 16, I started to have a lot of anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand why I really didn't. I mean, I mean, I probably always had anxiety, but then it turned into depression. I had no idea why. By the grace of God, my mother taught me how to meditate. That became a very strong foundation for me early days, my early days. Then, like most young adults, I turned my back on, not like most, I'm just going to speak for myself, but I turned my back on that meditation and just started to look for outside sources to soothe me, relationships, my credentials, trying to show the world that I was great. Right out of college, I started a PR company that represented nightclubs. And you can do the math here, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I was really wanting to prove myself. I was really wanting to be seen. And I found my way to a lot of... Uh, Un- uncomfortable patterns that really led me to numb out that anxiety, numb out that dis- depression, and numb out that pain. And the worst of all was cocaine. Mm-hmm. But it was also the best. It was also the best thing that ever happened to me because cocaine isn't the kind of drug you can ignore. Right. You know, sometimes you can kind of get by being an alcoholic for a little while. Yeah. But cocaine just takes you down. It literally, like, you literally start to disappear physically and spiritually and in the world, you yeah. start to disappear. Thankfully, I had a spiritual intervention. I was starting to want to get clean, and, and I, I didn't want to. And then one morning, I was hungover and hadn't gone to sleep yet. And I asked, 
I didn't really have a huge connection to God in that time, but I had a stack of self-help books next to my bed <laughs> and I had a journal and I was seeking, seeking, seeking. Mm. And I woke up, I didn't never went to bed that night and I, I got on my knees and I just said, I need a miracle. This isn't working. And that's when I really heard the voice of spirit come through me, audible. It was audible. And I heard, get clean and you will live a life beyond your wildest dreams. The next day I went to an AA meeting. I've been sober 16 years. That 12-step process was a reigniting of my spiritual faith. It reignited my spiritual faith. It grounded me in a relationship to a higher power of my own understanding, which is the best part of that program because it's yours. You don't have to follow any one way. You just develop what that means to you. As I continued to deepen my faith, very quickly I began speaking about it. I got on stages. I started wanting to just share my recovery experience, share mm -hmm. my spiritual faith. This was at a time, this was 16 years ago, so we, no one was drinking green juice and gluten-free and there wasn't <laughs> a wellness industry at all. Uh, and in fact, it must be so fascinating for you because you were at this wave and before I was. So to just be the witness of this new energy brought into wellness is beautiful. But you've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I've seen a lot, too. I mean, 16 years is enough. And it was just it's just it's just been a pleasure and a gift to be a spiritual teacher all these years. And one of the things that I think we really need to identify is that while I got clean and sober at, at 25, I wouldn't really know why I was an alcoholic and a drug right. addict until I was 36 years old. We can we can come back well, to that. We can go that's there. That's <laughs> profound. I'm just going to add here because, uh, you know, you're right. When you hear it, it's funny because we've never actually sat and, and, and drew out the line, right? And I'm listening to you going like, wow, that was so much like same as me. And I also mm -hmm. took the express train into recovery because that's what Coke is, right? It's the express mm -hmm. train. I mean, it slams you down. And same thing. Mm -hmm. I had that auditory experience too, but it's that moment of absolute surrender, 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 surrender. Um, so let's go to when you're 36. And uh, yeah. and when you realize that there's something there that now explains to you how you got there. Well, I had been running, running, running with the cocaine, with the alcohol. Then I put down the drink and the drug and I picked up codependency. I picked up workaholism. That was a big one for me. And by the time I was 36, I was had so many balls in the air. I'd probably authored over half a dozen books. I was traveling all over the world. I was, but I was also very, uh, very uncomfortable getting help. So I had one virtual assistant helping me. God bless her. I was married and trying to have a baby. It was just a lot at one time, and a lot of my uh, control mechanisms were getting dismantled. So the way the control was a way of hiding and numbing this impermissible memory that mm -hmm. had been locked away. And I literally would say to myself in the months leading up to this memory being revealed that I kept saying, I can't go on like this. I can't go on like this. I'd have breakdown after breakdown, literally cracking. Yeah. It was like cracking into this memory. And then without realizing it, I revealed the memory was revealed to me in a dream. Mm -hmm. I had a dream of being an adult, accepting and confronting the experience of being sexually abused as a child. Yeah. And it didn't give me much more information than that, but the information was so strong in my body. I woke up that morning and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm not talking about this. It can never be revealed. Shut that shit down. Mm -hmm. Then I went to therapy a few days later and my therapist just said a few leading phrases that, that just at the moment I was ready to acknowledge. Right. And it just threw me right into the full experience of the memory. And when I say the full experience, it wasn't like I resolved who it was or I resolved where it was. It was just psh, just full-blown, holy shit, this did happen to me. Yeah. And I walked out of that office and I got in the elevator, went, went down one flight, started having a panic attack, got on the staircase, ran down the stairs, got out into the busy New York City street. It was 6 o'clock at night in the winter, found my way into an H&M and went into the to the dressing room, fell to the floor, hysterically crying, 
called one of my very close friends, Dr. Lisa Hallerman, who's a very close friend of mine and an addiction specialist. And right. she's hadn't been studying trauma. And I called her and I said, Elisa, I just remembered that I was sexually abused as a child. And she goes, I always knew. Right. Yeah. So that began a really committed journey of trauma recovery. And so since 2016, I have been in the devotional practice of undoing the traumas from my past so that I could be free right here, right now with you. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So this was so profound. I, you know, when you say I'm in the devotional practice to unpacking the trauma or to undoing the trauma, um, you know, a lot of us don't remember certain things. I also was uh, molested when I was a little kid and then had uh, violence and sexual abuse later on. And that is something that we can run from because shame is at its core, right? I mean, That's it's right. like we're rooted in shame. Nobody, you know, That's it's right. like when you first said, going back to what you said, I'm not going to no, talk about I this. I won't talk about I'm this. I'm not yeah. talking about this. That's right. And, you know, as and I shared with you the other day that it took me, I'm, I'm 63 and I'm sober 36 years. And it's only been in the past few months that I've talked about an old trauma around sexual abuse with my therapist. It's taken me 40 mm -hmm. years to be willing. Full body chills. Right? Yeah. And we have to talk about it. We have to we have to set ourselves free because it will take us hostage. And that's what I've you know, I've been watching you go through this and and it really is like a liberation, yeah. this devotion to the healing. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about um, that statement that you're in this devotional relationship to set yourself free from this. It became my highest priority. Because if I wasn't going to fully submerge my energy and my commitment and my devotion to recovery, I wouldn't be able to be the mother I am today. I wouldn't be able to be the wife I am today. I wouldn't be able to be the boss I am today. I wouldn't be able to write this book. I knew when I was in 2016, I knew, I said, I said to my speaking coach, oh, I need to talk about this. I need to write about this. She said, not yet, honey. You're going to reactivate right. yourself and reactivate your audiences. So I knew very, very clearly that this was not a book that could ever come out of me until I was very much on the other side. Right. Of course, I'm still consistently in practice, in consistently devoting and developing more of my sense of inner safety. But there's no way in hell, Colette, that I could have written this book without being so far on the other side. Well, you have to. I mean, I think this is that re-traumatizing because mm -hmm. if you don't know and the trigger just, it's like a light switch just turns on and it is in the body. It, it's held in the body. And then you just go back there. So I'm really, whoever told you this was so, so smart because I yeah. know the desire like, oh my God, I found this thing and I'm feeling a little bit better. So I want to share it. And it's really good that you waited. You know, I actually, fu I actually fucked up a little bit. Like I, I, I had moments where it just started to come out because for years, and years I had so many men and women in my rooms talking about sexual abuse as I'm sure you have as well yeah it's just far too fucking common sorry I'm with the f word a lot no I'm, um, I'm good I'm a mystical pirate that's my I know word. you're fine about that <laughs> we can have salty language on my podcast yes, we no can. problem yes, we can. We can. <laughs> but I just I, I did have moments where it would come through in my audiences and I regret those moments because I was not steady enough to hold the conversation. What I'm most grateful about was that I was able to witness those moments and say, okay, stop that, and really forgive myself and trust that I helped the audience as much as I could. And then most importantly, got myself to as much safety as possible before I decided to write this book. Mm -hmm. And I, tr I trust that readers are constantly co-regulating with the author's energy when they're listening to their books or they're reading their books. So the intention and the energy that we infuse into these books has the power to support the reader in a really miraculous way. Throughout the book, I am constantly checking in with the reader. How are you doing? You know, did don't do this exercise if it's too much. Go back to this chapter for some grounding. Just really caring for them as much as I possibly can because they don't necessarily know better yet. They don't know that it's too soon, too fast. Right. Or they do it and then they're just reactivated. So it's I'm, I'm really there for the reader. 
And I, I believe and trust in that. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't here. This is really interesting because it's all about the energy dynamics between you and the reader. And that's 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 what we call in the Wooniverse. This is, you know, it is the energy exchange between you, your consciousness and where you are in the journey when you share your story. There was another book a long time ago called Courage to Heal. I don't know if you ever, if you knew about that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was mm -hmm. um, early in my recovery. I, I knew I had been, you know, I'd gone through a lot of sexual trauma and uh, it really helped me, but I couldn't do all of it. I wasn't ready. And I, it did trigger me a bit. And, and so I had to put, I, I had to shut the door until mm -hmm. I was ready, but I did, I took what I liked and left the rest, or I took what That's right. was useful. That's right. That's and, right. And you invite people that way in all of all your books. The way you do through. that. Yeah. All the, and the other thing that I think is really valuable about this specifically is that even if the reader just reads the book and doesn't practice any of the principles, what they'll be gifted with is number one, to know that they're not alone in their suffering. Right. And number two, to be in the presence of someone who cares. So even though I'm not physically sitting next to them, my face is next to them by their bed that <laughs> night. And I am in bed with them. And I care. I care so deeply, yeah. Colette, about these people. I care so deeply. I care so deeply. I just, it's funny. It's like I've been through eight other book launches before this. And always I've been thinking of the reader first, but now more than ever, now more than ever. I wrote this on my Instagram. Like I'm shouting this book from the rooftops and it might be annoying to you, but here's the deal. <laughs> I want as many people to find this because we need it. Mm -hmm. We need it. And then the third thing that they get from it is that they can come back when they're ready. Yeah. Yeah. So this is an interesting thing that you said because, you know, when you say, I've been, I've been through eight book launches and I've watched all your book launches and I've known you throughout this entire time and I've seen so you have changed so dramatically as a result of that. And I think, and tell me if you agree with me, that um, I, mean, I come from the recovery background too. I feel like I have a second chance at life that I could have died. And that, you know, whatever um, I overcome and whatever I make peace with and whatever I can liberate myself from, the pain, um, I, it is my duty to share that with other people. And I know you've, I mean, I, I, I think you feel the same way. Look, the reason that the 12 steps works, carry the message. That's right. Just just help one other alcoholic. In the case of this book, if I serve one one person, I've done my job. And because I believe that so many need it, I'm going to do my part to make sure they hear about it. So do you think that um, uh, the principles that you've set out in this book could also help people with the collective trauma that we're going through? Because yours is very specific, as was mine, right? It was very specific. We both come from a Holocaust survivor background, too. I mean, there's some commonalities that you and I share that are, that are personal, but at the same time, collective. Yeah. So how do the principles that you've outlined in the book, um, you know, how can they reflect the, the more collective trauma everybody's going through too? Well, the collective trauma begins way back with our ancestry because, for instance, your mother was a Holocaust survivor. Is your mom still yeah. alive? My mom has passed 30 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she so was she is... hidden in a Christian family. So yes. there was all of that there too. So Yeah. Really similar to my grandmother. My grandmother was hidden. She found her way out of Germany and uh, made it to the States. But the the epigenetics, yeah. the literally the energy, the, the microbiome in our system has carried the horror of the Holocaust all the way into our present system. They have a lot of studies on this where children of Holocaust survivors, even third generation, when stimulated in some way could smell burning flesh. Yeah, I yeah, dreamt as, that when I was a little kid. Yeah. And my yeah. mom didn't, she raised us as Anglicans. Like we didn't even know we were Jewish, like that we had any oh. Jewish blood in us, right? So we went so to church and then I had these dreams and the smell, exactly what you said, that woke me up in my dream at night and yeah. I saw these like skinny skeletal people yeah. being pushed into what looked like a big easy bake oven. Like I, like I know that sounded weird, but that was, I was yeah. only like four, right? Four or five making years me old. cry. You know, I think that, that the the thought of uh, of of that horror was so was too much for me as a, mm -hmm. a young person. Even though I studied it at camp and in my youth group, 
it was too much for me to fully comprehend until now. And that's actually another beautiful result of this trauma recovery is that mm -hmm. I can actually truly be present in my full sensations and emotions. And so that's, that's, that's what they call the felt sense in somatic experiencing therapy. And so I can really be present in this moment with just wh what my ancestors, your ancestors mm -hmm. went through and what that means to us now as humans carrying it on. And uh, it's it, so it starts there. But then there's all this. So there's a lot of people that walk around. And they're like, I don't have trauma. I don't have trauma. Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> we all are traumatized. We can't walk around right now without being traumatized, be, without yeah. a, being someone who has experienced trauma. You've lived through a collective collective trauma. We've lived through COVID. We were sent home. We didn't know when we were going to be back out of our homes. We were disconnected from humans. We yeah. were afraid of each other. We still are afraid of each other. There, This is a, a tr this is a huge trauma. Mm -hmm. And we sp experience traumas. You and I have experienced traumas with a big T, uh, child abuse, rape, all these types of violent traumas that we've had and that we have a lot of work to undo. And we continue to do that. And then there's folks that have trauma with a small t, being bullied, being uh, treated poorly by a teacher, uh, humiliated, feeling uh, even like a little bit of neglect is a trauma. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times people think, oh, I have an alcoholic parent. I'm not traumatized. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> so th there's all the historical trauma and also the trauma that we carry on from our lineage. But then there's the present trauma of living through a pandemic. Right. And you can't deny that. I mean, everything has changed so dramatically, and you're right, and even still. And interesting to your point about how people are still distrustful. I did a photo shoot on the weekend, and uh, there were these girls, and they were like, I had my mask off for a second because I came out of, right, and I was just about to put it on, and they were like glaring at me. like. But it was this kind of hostility, like, don't you dare come. Like, I'm like a germ, mm -hmm. walking germ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, it's I always keep my mask on. But even that, like that yeah. kind of suspicion that yeah. uh, has been now, it's a normal thing to be suspicious of each other. Yeah. Um, and that is something that is traumatizing because we're not used to that at all. And the changes. No. So I want to go to the intuitive of peace because I there I have a theory um, a, in my work as an intuitive and uh, as a spiritual teacher like you I run across a lot of people who are highly intuitive their psychic abilities have gone off the Richter scale in the past few years even and um, and what I have noticed are the people that have a, a really big awareness of this are people who have experienced the big T right first but it's when they work through it because that's what I've noticed with you. You have like gotten so, whoa, right? I mean, your abilities are off the charts now that you're actually unpacking all the trauma and you're on the other side of it. And that's that healthy, it moves, my theory is, is that it moves from the, um, the sense of always being on patrol looking for perceived threats, which is how we, it's a muscle, right? That's what we, we exercise that muscle. And then all of a sudden when you're not, when you're safe, now you have access. Can you tell me a little bit about your access now? Wow, I love this conversation so much. So as you know, I've always identified as a medium, not in the way that that I would identify you as being able to just full-blown have a conversation, but in moments when I'm writing, yeah. when I'm speaking, I'm absolutely channeling. Yeah. Uh, when I'm doing my podcast, Dear Gabby, I go back and I'm like, I listen to it. I'm like, who said that? <laughs> you know, who wrote that? We all have that ability. Yep. And some people it's just more fine-tuned. Being living on the other side of this emotional disturbance, as you've just defined it, out of the panic and chronic fight flight, out of the desperate need to control, out of the terror of being a human, which is truly what happens when we have big T trauma. We are so we all, we skyrocket out of our body. Mm -hmm. We have a soul departure. And in the trauma recovery process, we literally reclaim and reconnect to that soul retrieval. Mm -hmm. And I've been in my practice working and now I'm trained in internal family systems therapy. 
Oh, you did that. That's amazing. I am level one trained. I'm going oh. for all the level twos. I am in it. This is a profoundly spiritual therapeutic process that was founded by Dick Schwartz, who is a beautiful friend. And a, he won't, in the clinical space, they won't define him like this, but I right. will. Yeah. He's an absolute channel. Wow. He was gifted this incredible truth to to bring forth and it's spread beyond so many different therapists all without millions of therapists in, throughout the world and it's one of the greatest methods i write about it all in the book and introduce it in the book but what it teaches is that we're not one part right we have all these different parts of ourselves we're not mm -hmm. mono we are we have many parts of ourselves we have the exiled child parts that when you and i were sexually abused as children they just yep. went push locked up in yeah. under you know in the basement we're not talking to those guys ever again we're going to do everything that we can to protect ourselves from feeling that shame that guilt that fear that terror and we build up all these protector parts around us to anesthetize that exiled part mm -hmm. protectors look like addicts protectors are the cocaine addict the drug addict that those are extreme protectors that are called firefighters mm -hmm. protectors are controllers there, we are, you know, we, the protector parts become the work addict. The protector parts are the reactivity, the, you know, constant stress, anxiety, even depression or numbing out is a protector. Mm -hmm. When you start to see these as different parts, you can recognize that these protectors are in these very extreme roles and they're set up in those roles to stop, to, to anesthetize these feelings. Mm -hmm. And they've actually had a really good purpose for as long as they have. But as soon as we start to address them, we can get them out of the extreme roles. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is a spiritual practice. We do that by connecting to what Dick calls self with a capital S. Capital S, yeah. Which is, frankly, your higher self. It's God. It's the God within you. It's it's the spiritual connection, the intuitive force, the inner guidance. It's the resourced part of yourself. It's the compassionate part of yourself. It's the curious part of yourself, calm, courageous. It's this magnificent truth that you and I have been teaching for decades as it relates to connecting to God. But in this mm -hmm. case, when we start to rely on self and let self lead. The capital S. The yeah, I've called it the, yeah, I've called it big self, small self in my work too. So it's it's that's where the true intuitive content comes. That's too. when we it can doesn't start. come from the little voices. That's right. That's right. Because when when we when we let self lead, self can be curious about those protectors and help them relax. Mm -hmm. And as they relax, we can do a little bit more work in therapy on the child parts, and then we can retrieve those child parts and bring them home. This is a lot in one one sentence, and it's in the book. But here's how it gets you to a deeper connection to spirit. When you start to recognize that you that itself, that that spiritual connection, that that inner wisdom can be the leader of your internal family system. That's when you can listen to the spiritual realm. That's when you can not only have hits of inspiration, right, but you can let them come through you, when mm -hmm. you can act on them, mm -hmm. when you can use them as a method for your own recovery and for the service of others. So I always had the connection, but now it's grounded. Now it's a voice I hear often. And it's integrated. So what you're describing is fascinating. And uh, I, I love this. This is that you're doing this because this was something, uh, you know, I, I originally studied voice dialogue, the Helen Cedra Stone method, and that's, you know, really um, gone through a lot of my work, too. And this this reminds me uh, what you're doing, what you're sharing right now, that about the integration piece, because a, what I've seen is there's a lot of really highly psychically tuned people yep. that are disconnected from the integrated pieces. So mm -hmm. there's still, you know, there's still a layer of, and I don't want to say dysfunction, I would rather say wounding that never has gotten resolved. And so those voices or those subpersonalities or however, you know, you describe them, um, mm -hmm. you know, that are active, that we abdicate responsibility. The small self runs the show because we haven't put put the bridge there. That's exactly right. Right? So what I'm hearing from you and what I'm feeling from you too is this, and it does, it's like you are initiated. There's an initiation, like this cosmic initiation that happens, you know, through the work that you're doing and then you get to the other side of it and then you have genuine access. Doesn't mean that you don't continue to do the work and there's a big difference. 
What's profound about what you're saying is in IFS language, he calls it direct access to self. So you're calling, you know, genuine access to, to, yeah, to self okay. and to and to and to the wisdom, the love energy, the universal presence that we are always wanting to connect to. And here's something that's really important for your listeners. Another pr protector part can be the uh, spiritual bypassing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not bad. It's like, look, it's a beautiful way to be in protector because it's no longer often when we put down the drink and the drug, we're going to pick up the spiritual practice to just yeah. in many ways get above get higher than the pain. Mm -hmm. And I did that for many years with kundalini yoga. And by the way, I'm not I'm not bashing kundalini no, no, yoga, I get but it. I, I'm going to go on record just saying in public with you right now that I'm deeply, deeply disturbed by the actions of uh, the yogi who brought this right. to the States. But yeah. I'm grateful yeah, yeah. that it was brought here. Yeah. Just sorry, I'm still hooked on that. For a bit. <laughs> um, parts it. of me are really in protector mode there. So yeah. we, we were using these, these practices to get above the the pain and even yeah. the word ascension right totally. like their ascension I, I like i'll be honest like that just makes me want to barf so it's like because i'm all about the shadow work like we cannot spiritually bypass i couldn't and agree more you can't because you don't get anywhere this is a, this just bullshit and you just go from oh i feel pain but i am ascending into the fifth dimension mm -hmm, i'm like mm -hmm. hello you're in three i don't give you know like you're still learning and if you're going to take your wounds over there you're going to hurt more people here's the thing though when i look back and i look at my cocaine addict part and i look at my alcoholic part and i look at my codependent part and i look at my workaholic part and i look at my spiritual bypassing part and i look at my you know getting high on my own supply and kundalini yoga part <laughs> I say thank you because yeah. those protector parts were helping me survive until I was safe enough in my system to remember and process and reprocess the trauma from my past. Mm -hmm. So while I'm grateful that I got sober, I'm grateful that I stopped spiritually bypassing, I'm grateful that I'm no longer a workaholic, I can say thank you to those parts. They had a great service. And they still show up for me in beautiful ways without being extreme. And and they're manageable now, right? That's the point. Correct. So you can feel them, you can acknowledge, and you don't stay in them long, as long. And more importantly, there's no bad parts. Right. So the part of me that was the controller, the controller mm -hmm. wrote nine books in 11 years. <laughs> and while she doesn't have to be so extreme anymore, and she can take a longer time to write a book, and she can be so much more relaxed about it, she did a really good job. Yeah, she did a great job. She did a great job. And she couldn't carry on like that because it was too extreme. But she did the best she could at the time to help me get through what I needed to move through mm -hmm. and to get to where I am now. You know what so I think when you said, you mentioned spiritual bypassing as something that you could... Um, like live with and recognize this was there. I remember in my early recovery, there was so much stuff I couldn't look at mm -hmm. that spiritual bypassing back then, like 35 years ago, when I was first getting clean and sober, I needed it. I actually needed to do that because there was so much stuff I couldn't even, I, I had too much shame. I, it was for me enough to stay clean and sober. And I went from clean and sober, seeing myself as completely broken, dirty, you know, shamed, and then just to go up here and it worked for me. But I think right now, because of all the trauma, et cetera, everybody's going through the invitation to be present with the shadow and not blame yourself and not ever see yourself as broken. I think that's really key, certainly in, in my view. And this this book, Happy Days, is by no means void of spirituality. It is, it, <laughs> it, it, and it, it was my spiritual practice that guided my recovery every step of the way, guided me to the right therapist, guided me to mm -hmm. the dear friends like yourself who were right there first responder when I remembered the trauma, guided me to the divine spiritual but therapeutic methods that I teach in this book, mm -hmm. guided me to, to, to our, our, our EMDR therapist who we'll just shout her name out loud, Tammy. We could say, is, Tammy, we love Tammy, you, Tammy. Tammy, we freaking love you, <laughs> who is a divine human angel, and God yeah. works through her. I hope she's hearing this now. God yes, works through her. She's going to listen. <laughs> to be in great service of humans in their trauma suffering. And I'm just going to cry because I love her so much. But, you know, it's just 
my spiritual practice, my spiritual guidance system is what got me into those therapy sessions. It's mm-hmm. what got me to where I am, got me to the books that I needed to read, found my way to the spiritual path. And so maybe there was times when it was a defense mechanism or a protector part, but it was with me every step of the way and it guided every part of the process. Yeah, I think it's good to, and I'm glad we shouted that out. Yes, we share the same therapist, Gabby and I. Um, we didn't even realize and, it, actually. <laughs> right? I know. And that that's the super attractor. I think for me at one point, I was, I mean, my life is amazing. I have nothing to complain about. I love that I can channel and I can do all these things. And it was, But I was like the princess and the pea, right? There was this one thing that I kept locked away that has, that, that showed up in the weirdest ways with other people, like it, it, just with the dynamic dynamics, the really, really codependent, weird, dramatic dynamics of other people. And I couldn't, and I, I realized, oh, 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 this is not, I'm not a victim here. This is something I haven't dealt with. What right. is this happening? So it was this mutual friend of ours that said, cause I said to her, I said like, I need help. There's this one piece it's coming up for me now and I've got to do something. And she introduced me to Tammy and. Oh, and our divine goddess. I love her very much. Yes. We know who that is. <laughs> we know yes. who that is. We know who yeah. that is. So that when you think about that, right, because you have always talked about being a super attractor. And I think um, I want to talk a bit about super attractor because it's that those words and that language is still really great for me because we we can't think of it. It's only going to be happy, joyous and free. We get to happy, joyous and free when we see these patterns that keep coming up for us in the outer world because we can't say, oh, that's that was them, not me. It's like, okay, Mm. hmm, I'm the common denominator here. These things keep repeating. Hello. Mm. Right. And then we realize, okay, so I've been saying I want to be free. I've been saying I want to be liberated. I can say I want to teach and I want to share and everything, but guess what? I've attracted this thing. (laughs) That's right. And this is just as important as the happy stuff. I actually said to, I was doing like a Q and A on my Instagram yesterday and someone was saying, you know, the universe has your back, really help me. And I, she's like, but now I'm facing into deeper things. And I was like, oh my God, this is the plan for you. And I like to prescribe people as if I've got like my prescription <laughs> pad out, but it's really my books. And so I'll say, okay, go read the, go read Happy Days when it comes out. And as soon as you're done reading that, go back and read The Universe Has Your Back and then go read Super Tractor. Because when you do a book like Happy Days, you start to clear away the blocks mm-hmm. to the presence of your Super Attractor power. And that is in that book too. There's a lot of deep work in that book. And if you are already through those books, go back and do happy. Go back and do and it again. Back. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Right? Because it makes a lot of sense now, now that this book exists and you go back, like it's like a puzzle. So It's like a um, puzzle. It's like a puzzle. So, so cool. And it's a puzzle that you get to re, you get to rediscover. Um, yeah. When you think that's the, kind of, I love that you have the prescription because that's all my Oracle cards are really for prescriptive rather than predictive use. It's like, these are prescriptions and you can go back a ton, ton you know, a hundred times and you won't step in the same river twice. And when you think of you, um, and and all of this that you're offering people, it is pretty exciting that they'll say, you know, you can go look, go read this, but can go back because people think, oh, trauma, Im- somehow trauma or the word trauma erases the attractor piece. It erases the universe has your back because no, the universe made me a victim. And in fact, that's not true. It's like, wait, you know, these are invitations. These are invitations to heal, to grow, Mm -hmm. to free yourself, to get that big capital S self. Mm -hmm. I'll say the big self and the small Mm -hmm. self. So what I know is that this particular book, and and you guys got to know this, anybody who's listening, Gabby's books are oracles. I know this is going to sound odd, but now with this one, the lexicon is complete. So I'll just share with you, you know, when you create an oracle, and you have a couple of oracle decks, which are fantastic, but you know, when you create a divination system, which is what I do, you create a lexicon that has a vocabulary that is full. It's like a round universe onto its own. It's its own little universe, mm. right? And and now what you've done is you've completed. I mean, there's going to be more, but it's like all of your your universe, the Gabby Bernstein universe, with those three particular books, this latest one and the other one. It, you've created this lexicon now because uh, you can go back over it. Yeah, I'm serious. Like it's, I really, it's funny. I've been feeling that so much, but I didn't know how to describe it. It's like these three books, and even Judgment Detox, but more so really going through your own journey with those mm-hmm. three books, Super Attractor, Universe Has Your Back, 
and happy days. It's just a full circle experience. Those particular three. Yes. Yeah. And I'm feeling very clear now. Like I can now write a book on relationships or right. a cookbook or like these sort of uh, more specific books because this is complete. Right. And oracular guidance. We, let's go woo on this. Let's go. Right? So we let's go woo. So all of us have something called oracular consciousness in us, right? We all know, but we don't know what to call that. So some people mm. just have so my spidey senses. But when we're given a full system, right, because it, it has to be a system. And then it's com and judgment detox. Yeah, I forgot that one that should go in there. But that's kind of like your your kind of um, it's like a secondary, bonus. your clarity cards. Right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Here's Great. some stuff okay. we need to learn. Yeah. But yeah. then when you have these three, those three books, because you've nine, but those are the three I would pick to say, yeah. now you have the integrated system. And you're right, you can move on because it it's it, it locked now. So whenever I make an oracle, and it locks, like the, it, it has to lock for me, that means that all yep. of the pieces lock into place. And I know yep. it's a complete little universe. <gasps> and you just did that because you now right now you have this is my teachings about like you have you have to have faith that there is a higher self within you that is connected to the universe right because it's the, when you think of the universe and you're not connected you think the universe is over there up mm. there right the universe has mm -hmm. your back meaning it's up there but it's inside you mm -hmm. we are the universe and that's when you deal with the trauma that large self with a capital s knows that's it right. is the universe it is it connects you to all those different dimensions and what you and cool i both way have to put this right it's totally i mean you got yeah yeah you're 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 also locking in a feeling i was having like mm -hmm. a sense i was having and then it's always nicely reinforced by my beautiful friend colette <laughs> no it's amazing no i was so excited because i was looking at it and i was i was looking at it going like wow this is like a complete oracle now yeah. these three specific books like That's you right. can buy them three together and go back and forth as yep. you need a hundred percent yeah and depending on where you're at you could be prescribed a different order that's right. Love these books, right? And you can do something called stichomancy with your books. Want to get super woo? Yeah, <laughs> super woo, please. Super Let's woo. Let's go with the me. woo. We're gonna go to the woo universe now. It. Okay. So stichomancy is the uh, act of using a written body of work, like a book, um, that you open it up at any page. Uh, you ask a question. Say you need clarity from the universe. Right, and now you have your three books, so you figure that's like three different oracle card decks. Which deck am I? Which book am I going to use? So I'm going to open it up, close my eyes, and just flip. Or you can, or you can also do a randomizer on Google. Right, mm -hmm. you can go to Google Randomizer and put however pages, like from the introduction right to the end. You put in the number of pages, and then you do the randomizer, and that will tell you the page that you have to go to. And then, yeah, and then you just read the page. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do. We'll have some fun with. What this. are you calling this psycho? It's, it's called stichomancy. Stichomancy. Uh, S T Y. Mm -hmm. S T Y. And that is this like the process of picking the process of yeah at, of of first you have to pray, meditate, and ask the yep. book because I'm an animist, so I believe the book has yep. a spirit, right? Totally. And I know I this, do this book, often. Yeah. Right. And your new book is a very wise, older like a grounded spirit. The other ones were a little more spunky. You know what I mean? <laughs> but now it's it's completely locked. So mm -hmm. so it will work with all three of your books together. Wow, so you can even God. add them as numbers in terms of like add all three books together. I'm going to pull, instead of pulling cards for my listeners, I'll pull pages. Yeah. yeah, pull a page. Exactly. And then, yeah, so there's another word called bibliomancy, which is you do it with the Bible. So, uh, yeah, but this is, you can do that with your, your books. This is going to be amazing. Okay. One last time. Stico. Stichomancy. Yeah. Stichomancy. Um, S-T-Y-C-H-O-Mancy. M-A-N-C-Y. Like there's like, uh, Tassiomancy is the art of reading teacups or coffee cups. Oh, which cool. I know how to, which I do too. Yeah. So this is of course you do. <laughs> basically Gabby's book Mancy. <laughs> Gabby's book Mancy. That's amazing. Gabby's book Mancy. You could say that. That would be fun. You could make up your own name. Anyway, um, so what guidance would you have to any of our listeners who are looking to heal their trauma? So you have a lot of deeply spiritual people that follow you and uh, people who are a little lost and they they don't want to lose their connection to their deep faith um, and might be scared that somehow 
you know, leaning into trauma work could, um, do you get what I'm saying with this? I really right? do. So, I really yeah. do. How can they keep so both? What I want to say to that reader or person is all the spiritual work that you have done to the present, from whenever you started to the present, has established a profound sense of faith and safety and connection to a higher power of your own understanding which will allow you to feel safe enough to go to the places that scare you and know you will come out the other side because you are guided you are protected you are led spirit is holding your hand spirit is guiding you to the book when you're ready to read it spirit is saying put that down and go back to one of her other books until you're ready to read mm -hmm. that next pap that next chapter you are being guided it is your faith that creates the space for you to go deeper into your subconscious, to go deeper into your wounded parts, to go deeper and to retrieve those child parts and bring them back to safety. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I and I also want to underline this, um, everything you've been talking about, we, we, we've been talking about these parts, and I've always seen them as fragmented, but we're not broken. That's right. right? I think, right? Because yeah. I've never been comfortable with that we need to be fixed. None of these parts need none of these parts to be need to be fixed. They need to just feel safer in our system. Yeah. They need to be led by the internal leader self. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I really love that you said also um, about, you know, read what you can, like, you know, and if it's, if you're not ready, do what you can, go back. That permission. I think that's the one thing that I would say about you that has always um, impressed me about you is that you give all of us permission, you know, permission to be human. I get the whole workaholism thing and that. I mean, I was, I, I, I ticked up every, every box that you've talked about. Oh, no, that's me too, me too, me too. Of course, all we the have same the things. same history. We same have the same history. history. <laughs> this it's is the like, result of that history. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, especially that, you know, having to keep making stuff for people, producing, producing, producing. Otherwise, I, you know, I wouldn't, yeah. wasn't allowed to rest, for example. But, uh, you know, I love that. It's like, also really loving the parts of you that you think are problematic. I think that's the other thing, right? You know, this is a problem, but it's not. It's, it's not that, it we're, that we're problems, it's that we have parts of us that, like you said, need to feel safe. Mm. And mm -hmm. when we get triggered, that's the part that's running the show. It's that's not correct. The, the big the big S self. That's and correct. that's we have to forgive ourselves too. Well, listen, you know, I think that we have these parts where you can look back and be like regretful, but you can't. You have to look back and say, oh wow, that part, while it was extreme, and I would prefer to not do it that way in the future or now, it did what it needed to do to survive at the time. And so there's no bad parts. They don't need yeah. to go away. They just need to soften. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just have permission to soften. Yeah, permission. And that is, that is, I just love this. Anyway, Gabby, we've got some questions for you. Are you ready? I'm ready, baby. Let's go. Okay. All right. If you could have a magic power, what would it be and what would you use it for? If I could have a magic power, I would be able to undo the traumatic suffering of all individuals. Ooh, that's big. I just think that the world would, that would be probably the solution to all of the world's problems. Yeah, I, I believe you. Um, you meet an extraterrestrial. They are deciding to move to Earth. What would you tell them about living here? Hmm. I would say, focus on the fun parts of living here. I would say, choose a, a home that feels safe for you. Oh, I love that. And uh, and get a cat. I can hear her. Get a cat. I can hear she's, her, she's her in a purring on the microphone. She have, <laughs> yeah, she might have to get kicked out because she's in a feisty mood. Oh, my gosh. But meanwhile, she's. I could hear the purring. Um, we've all asked the universe to show us a sign. What was the wildest sign you've ever had in your life? The wildest. Well, maybe it began with you. I, I write about this in The Universe Has Your Back. I was trying to buy a house. And you were like, did you get your sign? And I was like, I didn't even ask for a sign yet. And then I started, and then I said, okay, well, my sign's an owl. I just said it to you. Right? Within like m hours, 
hours <laughs> I straight read it over. <laughs> there, was, there was an owl on the bumper sticker of a car. There was owl. And then I went to, to London and I was signing the contracts for the house. And I was like, am I doing the right thing? And owls were fucking everywhere. So yeah, <laughs> it's my owl. My owl is the owl. wildest one. Oh my God. I know. I love your owl. It's so good. Um, okay. What did, uh, what, tell me about spirit junkie. That's one of my favorite words. I, I have spirit jam in my membership site. So what is spirit junkie and how can we be one? Anyone listening to this show is a spirit junkie. <laughs> you are a spirit junkie. If you're listening, you are if you are wooing out with us, you are a spirit junkie. It's just anyone that's in the pursuit of feeling good through spiritual practice and spiritual principles. Anyone that's on the path of of awakening to that woo within and that connection to what that means to them so that it can be a great source of comfort and and steadiness in their life. Oh, I love that. Um, what's your favorite thing to search on YouTube? Oh my God, this is so lame. So <laughs> all, what I, all I watch on YouTube and it's all I watch really is like Trevor Noah, Stephen Colbert, uh, just just Seth, Seth Meyers. I, I'm just really, for two reasons. One, it's a healthy way to get my news. Yeah. Because it's com comedic. And I still want to be very aware of what's happening in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, as a speaker, I watch their comedic timing, particularly Stephen Colbert. And I unconsciously and consciously use it when I do oh, my talks. Like for a while I was watching, for a while I was watching um, it's only only comedy, only comedians because I, like I was like, you know, picking up some of Jerry's stuff and, <laughs> you know, just like slapping the mic and just doing things Bilber. that, yep, <laughs> doing things that were really enhancing the theatrical parts of being a speaker because it's like this is so fun. it is it's, it's like, like my art yeah. so why not just learn more it is your art i love this okay what's left on your bucket list well according to you <laughs> another baby which i'm open to creative possibilities for receiving this child not through my body Interesting. Interesting. Yes, because I always saw that you had a little girl, but you know, you did adopt a little girl kitten now. You know, it's so, funny. I was wondering, I'm like, is the girl kitten my child? Well, who knows? Who knows? I, I, you my my know other girlfriend who's a psychic, she was know. like, nope, nope, no, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. One last question. What do you dream about? I dream about the craziest shit. Uh, I dream a lot about like, being at parties and I have a lot of COVID dreams of like I'm now in this social setting and I have to take and no one's wearing a mask and I'm freaking out those are those are anxiety dreams I I dream I dream about um subconscious like right now my my book is about is coming out happy days and I dream about some of the the subconscious fears that I have around that mm -hmm. being revealed and that's that's good information for me. I bring it to my therapy. Yeah. We work on it. Yeah, dreams are information. Sometimes I dream I'm at a party in my pajamas. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't. Oh, have I've had any so shoes many dreams on. that I have a talk, but I haven't prepared, or I don't right? have the outfit right, and I'm rushing to get there. Yep. Yeah, me, I'm always in my pajamas. I'm like, why am I in my pajamas? And everybody else is dressed. <laughs> Okay, so what? Let's pull a card. Let's let's um, ask if the universe has anything that it wants us to reflect on. What else should we be reflecting on to close this fabulous conversation with you and me? Um, tell me when one. to stop shuffling. Stop. Okay, top, middle, or bottom? Top. Top. Okay. Clean it up. Clean it up. Clean Ooh. it up. What's that right? mean? So. I'll tell you what it means. So clean it up is the is an inventory, right? So when you when I get this card, it's like, ah, it's time to take an inventory. But it's like you wouldn't so say for example, you have a fruit store, you wouldn't leave the rotten bananas on the shelf, right? So it's really about taking accountability and responsibility for yourself with your own broom, decluttering your mind decluttering your past, right? Seeing, are there any rotten bananas that I've decided to bring with me in my purse, right? And what can I do to release myself and to disconnect from all those things? I'm going to shamelessly, turn. I'm going to shamelessly plug happy days because if you <laughs> want to clean right. it up, open this freaking book. <laughs> this book is like a vacuum. It will clean it up. Uh, 
Well, that that actually is so, so profound for me, Colette, because I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now so steady, so at ease, and I know the same for you, if we hadn't done the work to clean it up and continue to do the work to clean it up. Yeah, and I love that. Continue to do the work. Well, you are a shining example. You are definitely the lighthouse for so many right now. And I'm super proud to call you my friend and uh, sober sister and uh, that we share the same therapist <laughs> on the same path, holding hands. And uh, we really are. I, I admire you so much. And I'm so excited for this book. I know it's going to help millions of people. I love Thanks so for much. coming. Thank wow. Well, we learned a lot today. That's for sure. For more information about Gabby and all of her teachings and offerings, go to GabbyBernstein.com. Her new book, Happy Days, is available everywhere. Ebooks are sold and books are sold. Also, ebooks, books, everything, all kinds of books. Um, just thank you. Like, thank you so much, Gabby. This was so great. I love you so much. I love you. Thank you. <laughs>